I'm going to get us started so we don't uh, fall too far behind right at the beginning. As we begin, I would like to acknowledge we're on the unceded and ancestral territory of the Hunkaminam and Squamish-speaking peoples, including here in particular the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil -Tooth nations. I'm grateful for their stewardship and the opportunity to meet here today. Um, as a guest on this land, I have a responsibility beyond just acknowledgement, which includes learning the history and relations of this place. Before Vancouver, there was Cessnam, and, and in an exhibition about its history, Terry Point shared a Musqueam elder's teaching for visitors to come here, or really into anything new, um, one should come with an open heart and open mind. That feels like a teaching we can carry with us today. Just some wayfinding and logistics before setting the stage for our presenters briefly. Um, there are single stall, all gender washrooms out this room on your right, all the way down the hall. That's where the water refill station is. We're serving food and coffee all day in the foyer. You walk through it when you arrive, so I think you figured that out. Um, we have a code of conduct. You can find it on our site or on our LAN. Um, we want to provide a harassment-free environment for everyone, regardless of gender, gender identity and expression, sexual orientation, disability, physical appearance, body size, race, age, religion, or technical skill level. Um, if you are being harassed or notice someone is being harassed, please find one of the organizers. This year, that's uh, Gary or that's me. Um, if you can't find us, if you don't feel able to speak directly, we have an email that will be monitored. It's coc at rnetworks.ca. We also have volunteers, thank you to the volunteers, um, who are going to keep us running smoothly today. I also want to thank our Tier 1 sponsors, Holochain, whose sponsorship allowed us to offer low-cost registration and scholarships, and Boris Mann um, for not only sponsoring but collaborating tirelessly to make connections and infrastructure the Vancouver tech scene. Yeah, without their support, today would not be possible. Just a quick thank you too to our partners, 312 Main for this space, they're a social entrepreneurship incubator, DWeb organizers for some media support, Open Space Artist Society, Vivio Media Arts, and Western Front for helping us with our archival research. Um, you'll see on the program we identify spillover as an area. This is encouragement for you to take advantage of the hallway track of informal networking. In our case, it's more like a foyer track. Um, if a topic comes up that you'd like to have a conversation about, take it to the foyer. Um, also, we have a local network that you can hang out on, um, though there is public Wi-Fi too. So make sure you are connected to our local network. The password is sunflower, all lowercase. And if you visit rnetworks.local, um, you can find our program and info about speakers. If you go to archives.local, you can find materials about experiments on telecommunications art in so-called BC, including recordings of slow, can scan, slow scan performances that we have permission to share for the event. Um, we also have instructions for how to access a Samba shared folder with zines, images, and other materials that you can contribute to. OK, so why are we here? When we came together to plan this edition of our networks, our conversation was about turmoil online, perhaps most obvious on social media and in the intensification of platforms we are forced to use. But we also spoke about how to take advantage of the opening that that provides, to experiment with protocols and network spaces that we could collectively build and inhabit. We saw the return of some possibilities and the emergence of other new ones. But without there being any shared agreement or resolution to the many problems of being networked that we've seen and experienced. In fact, over this last year, those problems have gotten worse, or at least compounded, with the crises in cost of living, in housing, and in our environment, and with the rising tides of fascism and imperialism. However, as we're always chasing that feeling that comes from doing something difficult and succeeding with others, we're not ready to give up on pushing for the forms of computing we want. This year, we're deeply inspired by practices that transition away from the situation we find ourselves in. Let's use local first software, folk software tactics. Let's be guided by permacomputing principles and rely on solar powered servers. We're, we also always looked back on computing and what, what, what was that before an always on empowered present? And again, as I, as I referenced before, in particular, the early experiments in telecommunications art here in Vancouver by artists at Western Front, what's now Vivo Media Arts, and uh, in Victoria, Open Space. Um, the artists in particular, Hank Bull, Bill Bartlett, Peggy, Pe Peggy Cady, and Paul Wong, remind us of the interplay between social coordination and technology that is required to develop and share new practices. We've, also, we've always been interested in the past, present, and future. How can we look to the past, not solely with nostalgia? Where can we find connection to what people are already working on in the present? And how can we think from both of those collectively about a future in which many futures fit? 
Over the course of today, we have an amazing set of speakers to guide us through histories, practices, approaches that reframe what computing could be when the internet and the cloud, or at least someone else's computer, is optional. With that, I'll introduce our first speaker so we can get started. 